A lot of us heard about RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, but maybe not many have heard about Agentic RAG or Agent-based RAG application. And this is exactly what we're going to look at in this video. Now, a typical RAG application have two different pipelines. One is to ingest data and the other one is to query data or ask questions to it. Now what we're seeing is we take our documents, we convert that into some sort of vectors or embeddings, and from there we store it in a vector database, and then we can query based on that. Now this step is same for the agent-based RAG or a usual RAG application. What changes is that in a typical RAG application, the user asks questions and we convert that question into embeddings and then we search for answers in our vector database. We send it to an LM and we say this is the context and based on the user question, give an answer to the user. But this changes a little bit in agent-based RAG application, where now we have an agent which has memory associated with it, and also we can select any of the LLM providers that we want. And now the key thing is the RAG query pipeline becomes a tool for this agent. So if it sees that it needs to query the answer from the vector database, then it's going to go through the usual process. And if it sees that that's not needed, and if it can just answer a question based on its own knowledge, then it's just going to go ahead and answer that question. This opens up the possibilities. Now you can attach multiple tools. You can attach something like an internet search tool. So if the agent sees that there is a need to search internet, it can do that. If it needs to call the vector database, it's going to do that. Or if it is something within its own knowledge, then it's going to provide the answer. So this gives a lot more flexibility in comparison to just a RAG pipeline where it's either going to answer based on the vector database or it's going to say, I don't know the answer. So probably one of the easiest way to build this agent-based drag application is using Langflow, and that's what we're gonna look at. So we're gonna start with a template in Langflow. So this is the hosted version of Langflow. So you can go to astra.datastacks.com and then you can make a free account. And once you start a new account, you'll see that you will be landed at the Astra DB. This is the default. So in here, what you want to do is make a vector database. What I did is I went into databases and I created a new database for Langflow. Now the name I called is Langflow. You can call any name. And once you create this, now you can head over to Langflow. Now, if you already have a few projects, you'll see them listed here. If it is something new, you'll see a page with welcome and then a few templates. So we're going to start with a template that's very common. So this is the vector store rag, and then we'll modify this to convert it into a Gentic RAG application. So right away, when you start this template, you'll notice that there are two different flows happening here. The one at the bottom is where we are going to ingest data and the one at the top is where we can ask questions. So this is a typical RAG application. We are starting with a file and then we do some sort of splitting or chunking and then we store that text into the vector database. Now for our case where we have Astra DB. This component is already available in the template. If you already have a database, you're going to select that database and then you can provide either a name that you have set before or you can start a new collection. And, and basically this collection is where you're going to save your embeddings. Now this step remains same for any RAG pipeline. What we're going to change is we will modify this pipeline here where we can query and get answers. So instead of just calling OpenAI directly based on the context that we get, this is going to be an agent. I have modified a few things. So what you will notice is that our Astra DB, this component remains the same. We are going to select the same collection as well as the same database. And then we have the same embeddings that we use. So the embeddings that we used for data ingestion, we're going to use the same embedding model. Now, next step is that we are going to connect this to a retriever tool. If you were to search in the components, you'll see that this is available. So we're just going to bring that over and then we attach the Astra DB as a retriever and pull the data that we get from the DB into the retriever tool as needed. And now this retriever tool is what we're going to use with agent. 
agents are quite powerful in the new Langflow starting from version 1.1. So you'll notice that there is a lot more flexibility. You can call different providers, you can use a lot more tools than the version before. And on top of that, you can use this in a tool mode. So any agent can become a tool as well, or you can use that as an agent blog. So in this case, we're gonna use as an agent blog. So as you notice here, we have the retriever tool attached to the the agent and then any question that's asked by the user we bring the chat input directly to this agent. So this agent has the tool for retrieval as well as it has a built-in memory. And then on the other side, we have just the chat output. So one key difference here is gonna be in the prompt to the agent. So previously we asked if the context has the response, so answer based on that. If not, just say, I don't know. Well, in this case, we have a detailed prompt. And the key over here is that we are gonna say that you are an intelligent agent if a question is asked and if the response is available in the vector database you query and try to get the response you can retry if needed and if then you don't have response then you say i don't know or you can answer based on the best knowledge that you have we let agent do the work query it and get the response from the vector database and then formulate the response based on that so that completes the pipeline for agent based rag app so with that, if we ask question that what is this document, you'll notice that it goes through a whole thought process. So I had asked a few different questions so you can see the responses. Now for this particular question, it looks at the document available, then it's gonna get a few different output from the retriever and based on that, it's gonna answer or formulate an answer and then provide that back to us as a response. So that's exactly what we see here as a response. Now, if you wanna confirm that the tool was used or not, you can always go into the logs and then see what happened in the background. So you'll notice over here that there is the usage of retriever tool. And then based on that, we were given some response. Now, if we want to go one step beyond the basic rag, what we can do is we can attach another tool to this agent. So we can test if it is able to search internet or do certain tasks and also do the retrieval task. So let's do that we will take our same template or flow. And then in addition to what we had before, we're gonna add the search API component. And this is available in the components. So if you were to look at the tools, there are multiple tools available. So you could use something like Google search or search API, or if you want any data extracted from a website, you can use something like Firecrawl, or if you want to get something from Wikipedia, you could use that as well. So there are a lot more options available to us. So if you were to go to search API website, which is searchapi.io and make a free account, you get up to a hundred free searches and that's enough for our particular use case. So we're going to copy this API key and we go back to Langflow and provide that API key here. And now just with that one component, we have an agent application which can perform retrieval as well as search internet. Now, in this particular case, since we added the search API, we need to modify the prompt to the agent. So what we can do is we can add information about the API. So basically what we're saying is that first you can query the vector database if you think that the response is in the vector database. If not, you can search internet and get the response from the internet and then based on that respond back to the user. The strategy as well as the response guidelines over here help agent to make that decision. And then also we mentioned that there are these tools available for you in case if you wanna use them. And the description for these tools could be changed or modified if needed in the tool itself. So if you were to go to the retriever tool, you can add some descriptions, what type of a vector database this is, or what type of a document this is. Or in case if you wanna describe the document a little bit, saying that this document is about the physics paper, if that is the question asked, then you can use this tool. Same thing in the search API. Now this is something where the description is provided in the tool. You can always go in if needed, you can change the description, but even a short description like this helps the agent to use the tool if needed for searching the internet.
So now if I were to ask a question from the document that we provided, then we'll notice that it goes to the right tool and it's going to retrieve some information and provide that information to us. And then if we were to ask a general question, which is outside of the document, then we'll notice that it's going to reach to the tool that is appropriate. So there is some history from the previous question. Next question is where I asked about the recent Olympics and the results for that. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to the search API, use that tool, and then it's going to retrieve some answers, some links, and based on those links and the available information, it's going to formulate the response and give us the response, which is the answer that we were looking for. Again, if you want to confirm that in the logs, you can see that we are going to be using the retriever tool based on the question, as well as if needed, we are going to be using the search API. And if needed, we can always go into the details for these logs and see how the agent worked on the question that we asked. Hope this helps you get started with your first agent based RAG application. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions.